Here is the ventral surface of the snout of Squalus acanthius. As you can see, it has a lot of pores. There are actually two different types of pores here, which serve two different sensory systems that help a shark locate prey at close ranges, even if the prey item is not visible. For example, nighttime, murky water, or when prey hide. Pores of the lateral line system allow water to flow into its canals to detect the direction of water movements. A swimming prey item near the head of the shark creates water movements that can be detected by the lateral line's mechanosensory organs. In addition to water movements, sharks also detect a prey item's weak electric fields by using their ampullae of Lorenzini. You can see the pores of the ampullae of Lorenzini scattered on the ventral surface of the snout, where they're in good position to detect electrical activity of prey immediately in front of the mouth. A cross-section of the upper surface of the snout shows additional details of these two sensory systems, including the lateral line canal, which looks like a pipe with its large pores that connect it to the surface. Between the pores are the mechanosensory organs, called neuromast organs. Water flows into those pores and moves along the pipe, stimulating the cells of the neuromast organs, which detect the direction of water flow. The ampullae of Lorenzini look like clusters of grapes. Each grape contains the cells that detect voltage differences that are translated by the brain into a three-dimensional map of electric fields around the shark's body. The shark can sense disturbances in its surrounding electric environment. You can imagine how useful that would be to find prey. In digital dissection is the lateral line canal as it arches over the eye. And here is the large cranial nerve that innervates both the lateral line organs and the ampullae of Lorenzini. Follow that nerve to see how it innervates the clusters of grapes.